that if there is one clear scripture that denies your theory, whatever it is you think you believe there, you must abandon that theory for the truth of the scriptures. You understand that? You can have several vague scriptures that people try to pull together and make it say something. But if there is one clear scripture that denies that, then you have to abandon that theory. You understand that? Okay. For example, reincarnation. This is something that's getting into the church. It's starting to be more and more in the church. Okay. It's coming from more Eastern religions. Uh, it's not coming from the Bible. But for the example of uh, reincarnation, now I don't know of any scripture that would make someone think that reincarnation is a biblical doctrine. Okay. But I'm sure someone somewhere has twisted some scripture to try to make it say that. Now, in years past, and whenever I was studying and doing these different things, and for several different reasons, I studied somewhat in depth Hinduism, Taoism, and Shinto. Okay, and there were reasons why I was studying to it. Maybe we'll talk about it someday. But those things I studied at some depth. Okay, now I never practiced them, but I studied them because I was looking for truth. And I knew the Bible was truth, but I also wanted to know what other people were saying, and I wanted to be able to prove what was truth. So, now, the Word of God and science. Now, listen, I saw something on my wife's talking about Facebook the other day. It said, if you believe the Bible because science backs it up, you don't believe the Bible, you believe science. That's a, that's a real good statement, okay? You have to believe the Bible, even sometimes when it doesn't look like science backs it up. And eventually, science will catch up and back it up. That's the way it works. So, Now, <clears throat> the Word of God and science. Now, real science, not some pseudoscience study uh, that was bought and paid for by somebody. Okay? Because whoever pays the bills, that's the way the study turns out. So, but both science and the Word of God, true science and the Word of God, proves reincarnation untrue. Okay? First off. Now, because we're, we're putting these two together. Now, annihilationism, which is huge in the church right now, and it's going through a lot of the different uh, denominations, different things, and they're saying there is no hell because people don't go to hell. They actually are annihilated and they cease to exist and they're destroyed and all this, and they go into that. So it's a huge thing. That's why I'm addressing it. We don't believe that here. Okay? Simple as that. Annihilationism says energy can be destroyed, which violates scientific fact. Okay? Now, technically speaking, energy can only be changed in form. It can go from one form to the next. Matter into gas, liquid, solid, that kind of thing. Okay? Now, if you want to know more about that, you can look it up. I'm not a science teacher. I'm just stating summaries. Okay? Therefore, whatever energy is, whatever energy there is, it will always be. Okay? End of story. Now, it will never dissolve. This gives us the biblical scientific reason for the necessity of a place of eternal abode. The energy spirits of people have to go somewhere. When they leave here, they have to. They cannot stay here. I'll prove that. That's the reincarnation part. It's amazing how annihilationism and reincarnation are linked together. Okay? Now, so, now, if, okay, the fact that it has to do this, the fact that these, this energy has to go somewhere could make a person, if they didn't know the Bible, could give opportunity to the belief that there could be reincarnation. Because if it has to go somewhere and it can only be changed, then it can be changed into another person and come back here and over and over again. Okay, now, that, there's a problem with that, okay? So, Hence, because of that, if energy can't be destroyed, only changed, then man could be reformed into another person and come back to live again. That would be the natural, notice the word natural, train of thought. Actually, that train of thought is a perversion of the biblical doctrine of the new creation. Okay? But the Bible says in Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment, okay? You're appointed once to die. Now, for reincarnation to be true, you would have to be appointed to die again and again and again because you have to keep coming back until you get it right, according to the reincarnation uh, lie. So, now, you would have to decide what is that judgment that's after death. Now, we could talk about that, but we don't have time right now. 
But in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands. Now notice this next two. And of resurrection of the dead. Not reincarnation of the dead. Resurrection of the dead. And of eternal judgment. Now, very quickly. The word eternal there is number 166 in your Strong's Concordance. And it means eternal, everlasting, forever. Okay? It means without end. Now, the word judgment, because we're talking about eternal, everlasting, judgment. The word judgment is number 2917, Strong's Concordance. Just give me the number so you can look them up if you want to, no, so that you'll know I'm just not making this stuff up. And it is the word crema, okay? And it means a decision or a judgment, the function or the effect for or against, and it can mean damnation or it's translated as damnation or condemnation. Uh, it means to render a judgment generally in the idea of against something, but it can be either against or for. So this eternal, where it says there, the Bible doctrine in Hebrews 6, 2, the Bible doctrine of eternal judgment, an everlasting judgment, meaning that the judgment was set and that judgment is for a, a, either a, a punishment or for eternal life. Now notice, eternal judgment slash punishment Eternal life slash goodness. Okay? Now, let me give you the scriptures. Uh, let's see. Yep, let me get it here. Yeah. Now, if the dead are resurrected, they cannot be reincarnated. They're resurrected. Okay? Resurrection is a biblical doctrine. Reincarnation is not. All the dead will be resurrected. The good and the bad, the just and the unjust, the righteous and the unrighteous will all be resurrected, right? Okay, they will all be judged, and you can read it. The good judgment is go to your father and in, to the joy of your, your father, and the other is to be departed, okay, to depart into eternal everlasting judgment. Now, which means they're going to go somewhere forever, Right? They're not going to go somewhere and then be destroyed. They're going to go somewhere forever. Now, this knocks out reincarnation. It knocks out annihilation. And it knocks out purgatory. Amen. Just these couple of verses, all right? Now, let me read it very quickly. In Matthew 25, 46, it's 46, it says, And these shall go away into everlasting. That, number, that word is number 166, everlasting. Punishment. The word punishment is number 2851, but, now these are the unrighteous, but the righteous into life, eternal, right? Everlasting, eternal, those are number 166. They both mean the same thing. So when it says here in Matthew 25, 46, that the unrighteous will go into eternal punishment and that the righteous will go into everlasting life, everlasting and eternal are the same word. So whatever happens to the righteous, the opposite happens to the unrighteous, but for the same length of time. So if eternal punishment, everlasting punishment, is going to end at some point with annihilation, as some people would say, then that also means that you are not, in, at this moment or in the future, going to be in possession of eternal life. Why? Because if eternal everlasting punishment ends, eternal life will end because it's the same word used. You cannot say, well, in this case, it means forever, never going to end. But for this case, this other word means it's going to be for a certain amount of time, it's going to disappear. Nope. Both words mean the same thing. So your decision today is very simple. You have to believe in and hopefully possess eternal everlasting life in the presence of your Father and your Lord Jesus, or, okay, you have to decide that you will, or that there at least is, an eternal punishment that will continue on. Now, it's not an eternal judgment in the sense of that judgment is forever. The judgment is the punishment. The judgment is you are being sentenced to everlasting 
punishment, right? Everlasting punishment means punishment. Now, that word punishment literally means, I've got the word for it. It's number 2851. It is the word colossus, and it means punishment, torment. That's what it means. So whatever is going to be everlasting on the negative side is going to be torment. There is not one mention there of annihilation. And every scripture that people try to use to spread annihilation as a doctrine is taken out of context and not um, rightly divided, put it that way, right? So today, your decision has to be, I'm not trying to get to do an altar call, wouldn't hurt probably, but we'll do that later, okay? We'll do it later. All I'm saying is that you have to decide to believe in eternal life with your Lord, which will be forever, or an eternal punishment in a place set aside, not for you, but for the devil and his angels, the Bible says. So there is a place that Jesus has been providing or preparing for you. That was prepared for you. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. So the place, go to the place prepared for you. But that's by a decision of you deciding to follow the one who has prepared the place for you. Amen? Now, so summary is this. If there is life eternal, everlasting, then everlasting punishment, torment, is also as long as everlasting eternal life. If everlasting punishment can end for the unrighteous, then everlasting life can end for the righteous. They are the same words. Whatever one is, the other is also, but opposite. It is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. And if the judgment of the unrighteous is everlasting eternal punishment slash torment, then there can be no more lives to live on earth. The judgment is either life or death, eternal life with God, or eternal death, separation and torment away from God. If it is appointed unto men once to die, Hebrews 9, 27, then reincarnation cannot be true because reincarnation requires man to be able to die again and again. Now, I don't know if I could make that any simpler. Is that pretty clear? Is there any, I'm not telling you what to believe or not. I'm saying, is there any um, <laughs> cloudiness here as to these two doctrines? Okay, so annihilationism, which goes along with no hell, it cannot be true based on the word of God and science and reincarnation, okay, cannot be true based on the word of God and science. Amen? Amen. Now, so if you have to leave early, at least you got that part. <laughs>